Welcome to this BMAA Weight and Balance Instructional Guidance video. This short film will aim to assist microlight pilots, instructors and inspectors alike with understanding how to perform a pre-flight CG position calculation on a 3-axis microlight aircraft. Calculating the position of the centre of gravity on an aircraft is a relatively straightforward process, but there are several steps to undertake which can make mistakes more likely if diligence is not shown throughout. The calculation of CG position is guided by the physical principles associated with moments, where a known force acting at a perpendicular distance from a known point will create a turning force, or moment, about said known point. Calculating a moment is as straightforward as multiplying this force by the perpendicular distance. In fact, mathematically speaking, CG position can be summarised quite neatly in the following equation. CG position is equal to the sum of all moments divided by the sum of all weights. Unfortunately, knowing this equation alone doesn't really help one understand the details behind the calculations that need to be made. So let's break it down to see what steps need to be completed for each calculation and to see how the principle of moments are applied. However, before we move on, remember this, consistency is key. This phrase will come in handy a bit later on. When calculating CG position, the bulk of the work is done when calculating all of the moments acting upon the aircraft. Remember, in order to have a moment, a force must be applied at a perpendicular distance from a known fixed point. In the context of an aircraft, the force is the weight of any object, station or item to be included in the calculation. The known fixed point is referred to as the datum, and the perpendicular distance is the distance between the respective object or item and the datum and this is often referred to as the arm. The datum point of any aircraft is defined and stated by the aircraft designer, and it is this fixed point that all moment arms are measured from. The actual location of the datum point is not important. What's important is that the location is known and that every distance is measured relative to the datum. In other words, the datum's position will always be zero, regardless of the aircraft. Another very important point to remember is that there is a positive and negative side of a datum point, and consequently, the moment arms can be positive or negative depending on which side of the datum they are. This will all become clearer during the worked example. So, we need to know our weights and their arms to calculate their respective moments. But what weights do we actually need to know? Well, it depends what our aim is, but in the context of a pre-flight balance calculation, we'll probably need the following. The aircraft's empty weight, pilot and passenger weights, total usable fuel weight, and total baggage weight, if baggage is stored on the aircraft for this particular flight. Keep in mind, in the world of microlighting, for balance calculations, we refer to the actual empty weight of the aircraft, not the basic empty weight. Providing we know the position of all these respective weights relative to the specified datum, we can now start to calculate all our moments. Remember, to calculate a moment, we just multiply each weight by its own moment arm. For the purposes of aircraft balance, we are only concerned with the longitudinal, horizontal distance between the position of the weight and the datum point. This will make sense in our worked example when we see the diagram of the aircraft. Once done, we add all the total moments together and divide this number by the sum of all our weights. And this will give us our aircraft's loaded CG position. Perfectly understood? Or perhaps a little confused? Don't panic. Especially if this is your first time seeing this, a CG calculations can be quite hard to visualise in one's head, especially in a general sense. And in reality, we need specific, accurate information to perform these calculations. So let's go through a worked example together where we can use actual numbers, and we can also discuss where one might actually obtain the information or data needed to undertake these calculations. But before we move on, again, Remember, consistency is key. When undertaking balance calculations, ensure you are consistent with your units when measuring weight and distance. For example, don't record the weight of your pilot in pounds and your passenger in kilograms, or use millimeters for the fuel moment arm and meters for the baggage moment arm. Ensure that you are always using a fixed date and reference point throughout your calculations, and at every point, i.e. the object or item, is measured relative to the datum. Also be absolutely sure which side of the datum point is positive and which side is negative. Now, 
onto the example. Here we have a Skyranger Ninja, other three axis micro lights are available. And we need to perform a pre-flight balance calculation to ensure that once we have loaded the aircraft with a pilot, passenger, fuel and baggage, that the aircraft CG is within the safe limits as specified by the designer. As we stated earlier, the bulk of the calculation work is adding all the moments together. So let's construct a table to make this process clearer and simpler. First, we'll start by listing all the weights that we need to know. Before we go any further, let's confirm where the datum point is defined on a Skyranger Ninja. To obtain this, we can consult the aircraft data sheet, or in this case, a HADS, a home built aircraft data sheet. The data sheet for any microlight aircraft can be found on the BMAA website. The HAD states that the CG datum for the Ninja is the main wheel axle center line. So let's mark that on the picture now to help us visualize our scenario. Look what else the HADS tells us. Positive is forward of datum. This means that the moment arm for any item forward of the defined datum can be treated as positive, and any moment arm after the datum can be treated as negative. This is particularly important to know for our calculations, so let's mark it on the diagram to help us visualize it. Other aircraft data sheets may not specify this convention. In reality, it does not matter which side is positive or negative. What matters is that the moment arms either side of the datum are consistent with their sign convention, as this will ensure an accurate CG position is calculated relative to the datum. Anyway, back to the task at hand. Let's move on by listing the weight of each item. The aircraft's actual empty weight, remember we use the actual empty weight of the aircraft, not the basic, in this example is 271.6 kilograms. This will be taken from the aircraft's latest weight report, as seen here. Our pilot weighs 65 kilograms and our passenger weighs 70 kilograms, both ready to fly. There is also 5 kilograms of baggage stored within the luggage compartment. This brings the total cockpit weight to 140 kilograms. And consulting the aircraft's fuel trade off placard tells us it can carry 53 litres of fuel with this amount of cockpit weight. Assuming a fuel density of 0.72 kilograms per litre, the total weight of usable fuel on board the aircraft will be 38.16 kilograms. Note how we have been consistent with our unit choice for weight by only using kilograms. Now we know the weights. Let's determine the moment arms for each item. The moment arm for the aircraft's empty weight is also the aircraft's empty CG position, and this can be found on the aircraft's weight report. For this aircraft, as stated, the empty CG position is 0.375 meters. Note, this number is positive, so the empty CG point must be forward of the datum. The pilot and passenger, or crew, Moment arms can be found from the HADS as well. And here, the HADS state that the moment arms are both 0.15 meters. The HADS also provides the moment arms for the baggage compartment and the fuel tanks, which is minus 0.29 meters for both. Note that the moment arms are both negative, as both of these points are aft of the datum. And this direction was defined as negative by the HADS. Also note how we have been consistent with our unit choice for arm length by using only meters. Now that we have all the weights and the moment arms we need, we can now start to calculate the moments for each item by multiplying the weight or force by the arm or distance. So let's do that in sequence now. We now have everything we need to calculate the new CG position of the aircraft in this configuration. So let's do that now. We have calculated the CG position for this configuration to be 0.244 meters forward of the aircraft datum, about here, roughly speaking, remembering of course that this diagram isn't necessarily to scale. But wait, there's more. This is only the scenario for the aircraft once it is at full fuel and before engine ignition. Throughout every stage of the flight whilst the engine is running, fuel will be burnt and the total weight of the aircraft will reduce. It follows then that the CG position on the aircraft can change during the flight due to fuel burn. As an aircraft operator, we need to ensure that this change in CG during flight will not make the aircraft unsafe to fly. 
To confirm this, we can just rework some of our prior calculations to account for a worst case zero fuel scenario. In other words, we are now calculating the CG position of the aircraft when no usable fuel remains. First, let's update our table of values accordingly for this scenario. Note that not only the weight of the fuel is decreased to zero, but there is also no fuel moment arm. Using these revised figures, let's recalculate the CG position of the aircraft. In a zero fuel scenario, the aircraft's CG position is now 0.293 meters forward of the datum, about here on the diagram where the red shaded point is. This tells us that as this aircraft burns fuel, the CG position of the aircraft moves further forward. Mathematically, this makes sense from the calculations we've just done. So let's think about it conceptually for a moment. The fuel tanks within the Sky Ranger are aft of the aircraft's fully loaded CG position. It makes sense then that removing weight aft of the CG position will cause the CG position to move forward. All that is left to do now is confirm that these CG positions we have calculated are within the safe limits specified by the aircraft designer. We will therefore consult the trusty HADs one last time to obtain the safe CG limits for the aircraft. From the HADs, we can see that the aft CG limit is 0.21 meters forward of the datum, about here, and the forward CG limit is about 0.38 meters forward of the datum, about here. This confirms that in its current configuration, the aircraft will be safe to fly during the entirety of its mission. Success! Now while this diagram isn't completely to scale, it does give a visual idea of how small the safe CG window is, which hopefully emphasises how important it is to be accurate and thorough with CG calculations. This concludes this guidance video on performing a pre-flight CG calculation for a three-axis microlight aircraft. Thank you very much for watching, and we shall end with some closing points to summarise. The CG position is simply calculated by dividing the sum of all the moments by the sum of all the weights. The datum is a fixed point by which all moment arms are measured from. And finally, consistency is key. Consistent unit choices, consistent sign convention, and a consistent datum point will ensure your calculations stay mathematically correct.